Well, there's a lot to start with, but I think we'll just say in general, there's a lot of changes coming to Mythic Plus in Season 3 especially, but also in Patch 8.2. So we're going to get right into it. This is going to be a video talking about some of these changes, some of them undocumented. Uh, some of them documented, though, to be fair, but a lot of them are undocumented or kind of just small changes that add up to quite a lot. So we have three different things on Wowhead now. Well, more more like two, really, but uh, they actually um, are yeah, some information that most people might know already, but then they have a little bit of a section down here that people might not know. So uh, we're going to go through it all, and I'm going to give you my detailed opinions on this, and you guys can give me your detailed opinions on my detailed opinions. And we could uh, we could have some fun doing that. So anyway, in case you haven't seen today, just a couple hours ago, people found out that Blizzard actually hotfixed the mob count in dungeons on the PTR with the Beguiling Emissaries now giving enemy forces and progress and Shrine of the Storm mini bosses giving apparently even more count. So uh, there was hotfixes yesterday, right? which was I was saying there's a couple other things here that you might want to take a look at. I mean, this is, uh, this is the one we are going to look at here, but... Anyway, all is going to be down below. But um, so, long story short, effectively, one of the big changes here that just happened is they're uh, giving count now, beguiling mobs, the emissaries themselves, and that's kind of a big deal. So, uh, I guess uh, you know the people at Wowhead and, and around the sphere of influence of Wowhead have tested out some interesting things here, mostly about uh, you know specific dungeons, which ones are giving count. And ironically, me and uh, uh, Alex actually just had this conversation about which. Uh, yeah, which which is the better way to look at count? Now he apparently looks at count by the actual raw number, which I didn't even know existed, honestly. Uh, but this is what they're looking at it too. They're not looking at it by percentage, so I don't really know what four is. But people are saying that kind of the normal mob in a dungeon is going to give four, right? So one of these emissaries is just going to give like one percent basically every time you fight it so not a lot but i guess you know for shrine that's actually nine for some reason i don't know how it's calculated and apparently told the gore has zero which maybe by the time you're watching this this article been updated or something i don't know but uh, so they're saying that you know based on the normal mob count then every other dungeon in the game should get four except for shrine and except for told i don't really know i don't know what's going on but one way or the other uh they apparently also say that shrine previously Blizzard changed the mob count of Shrine of the Storm once again, so pretty substantially, I guess. Uh, this is a dungeon that's kind of caused a lot of weird uh, weird confusion with the uh, count and how it's approached. Apparently, uh, you know, if I made this video last week, we might be here talking about how count was worse in here. Now I guess it's better, or I don't know. I'm not really sure, to be honest. But anyway, you can see a, a full comparison of each of these, right? So um, the Wind Speaker... Uh, we don't these are the named mobs, right? These are the three named mobs and a lot of people skip uh, two out of three of these Maybe sometimes three out of three of these. I've never seen everybody skip all three But you always almost skip rune carver and people have been skipping the guardian elemental a lot And I think there's a strat to skip this uh, individual as well But you can do some funny stuff with them either way and now they get 36 counts So I d again, I don't know the raw values very well. That's that's an odd number to see. I don't really know what percentage that is, but I have to imagine it's probably like five or so percent each. So yeah, I mean that's not bad. I guess uh, you know you can still skip it. I don't. I guess if they change the actual calculation, uh, yeah, I mean that's going to be a big deal. But uh, so wait, what is this? Oh wait, what is this? Why is it down here again? I don't actually. Oh, this is the percentage. Oh great. Okay, of course, five point one percent. So that's pretty good. So it's only giving two percent. So that's double the percent. So I assume they've adjusted the count as well. I guess they made a post on this too. Is that in this one? Mob count changes. It was two days ago. So yeah, you know a lot's been changing one way or the other, and uh, apparently uh, you know there's going to be a lot of changes to routes. So that's probably the takeaway here, one way or the other is that a lot of routes are going to be changing one way or the other, and they might continue to change even during the season if this type of thing is any uh, you know, any indication. Apparently now Waycrest Manor as well. Overall mob count has been required to complete. Enemy force has been increased by 5%, and that's probably because they've changed Ma Matron Alma to now give almost double, just shy of double, the extra count there so another mob that a lot of people just kind of skip you don't even really have to try to skip that mob it's just literally you can just go one direction and she will not come anywhere near you so that's nice king's rest as well on the list interesting uh increased by 10 percent. but again animated guardians another mob type that uh gets skipped a lot and <laughs> not going to be skipped in season three i'll tell you that there's going to be a lot of shadow whatever void touch emissaries that are going to 
probably prevent you from skipping these types of mobs. And they're not going to be skippable in their own right, realistically. So getting more count from the animated guardians is a nice little concession. Uh, increasing it by 10%, though, is a bit odd because I really don't know. This is a weird dungeon to me, King's Rest, because you pretty much can't actually go under count in this dungeon if you wanted to. Uh, it's very difficult to do. You'd have to have multiple rogues and you'd have to do a lot of weird stuff. So I don't know. I'm not a big fan of King's Rest count. I don't think anyone really is. Uh, but anyway, and then uh, Told the Gore has been changed substantially. Now, if you watch the video, the stream where we tested Told the Gore on the PTR, it was my god. And that seems like 15%. That seems like an understatement. So, yeah, uh, we had very little count at the end of Told the Gore. And we pulled stuff that I normally wouldn't have pulled. So, anyway, there's also uh, dungeon tuning changes. And that's really what the main part of this video is going to be about. So, they actually took the time to make kind of like a, a patch note section that obviously uh, consisting of undocumented changes that Blizzard should be documenting, but they're not. So, we'll go through this too as well. And then we'll take a look at some of the other stuff here. And then I'm going to end up with some of this stuff here too because this is interesting too. But anyway, uh, let's start with this. So, a tall Dazar. Okay, so first of all, this has nothing to do with a tall Dazar, but all dungeons are going to be scaled, uh, increased from eight to eight percent to level to ten percent per level. Okay, and apparently this makes a ten in Rise of Azar feel like a twelve in patch eight one five. So that's actually not bad at all. That's definitely better than I thought it would be. I figured it'd be more like maybe like a fourteen. So is that big change? I don't, not really sure what's happened with that. But anyway. Uh, yeah, some changes there. A fixed combination apparently has uh, fortified busting and quacking replaced by fortified busting volcanic. So that's a huge change. Because quacking, as we know, one of the worst fixes in the game, if not the worst, cannot prevent it in any real way. So yeah, that's a great one. I think that's a big change there. Uh, maybe there'll be more to come, but that's nice. Now, a lot of uh, talk about Priestess Alunza. This is one of the easiest fights ever, probably ever in any five man, to be honest. Basically kills herself. Does almost no damage, so some of these numbers might look ridiculous, but frankly, probably still too easy of an encounter. I mean, it's ridiculous how easy that fight was. And uh, even with those buffs, I mean, we did this on the PTR, it really wasn't that bad. The big thing here is this, um, I think it's a molten gold mechanic. Yes, uh, yeah, so that's the case. This every three seconds, so the first tick of this is giant. Like, it almost one-shot our players. It hit them for about 80% of their health. So you got to get that dispelled before that second tick goes off. Otherwise, that person dies. There's no there's no way you're going to... I mean, it'd be very hard to heal that up quick enough for them not to die the second tick. So you got to instantly dispel. And then Tainted Blood actually does real damage now. Like 685% increase on Tainted Blood. That's a lot. So this is going to be a really hard fight probably on like, you know, heart, like your 20s and shit. I don't know. We'll see. But anyway, Dazari Colossus, that's a mob on the left that literally nobody has ever pulled for any reason other than maybe RPing or trolling. Uh, Gathering Souls no longer grants uh, healing on the allied death and the damage bonus per stack reduced to 10% was 25%. So if for some reason you're fighting that mob, which I guess, you know, maybe might actually happen now in Season 3. Uh, that's going to be a lot easier to kill, that's for sure. Reanimated Honor Guard. Okay, this is a big change, especially for Blood DK players because this is going to very likely at least buff or nerf, I'm sorry. Rending Maul's uh, actual damage when you control it as well. So this is going to make fighting this trash a lot easier. I mean, it's a 23% damage decrease. Frankly, the difficulty of the boss, or the mob itself, it's not a boss, uh, ironically. The difficulty of the mob is that it's going to uh, you know, pulse for all that AoE damage that it shoots out. But the actual tank damage was really high too, so that's nice. Now, one of the bigger changes here is probably Freehold's timer was reduced by 3 minutes. A lot of people have been talking about that, and frankly, I can totally understand why that would happen. Freehold is uh, one of the easiest dungeons and probably uh, overly easy, so definitely not surprised they're changing both Freehold and Toldegore in these patches. Uh, King's Rest, enemy forces requirement, so we I think we basically already talked about this. Uh, but also the Golden Serpent spit gold damage was reduced by 25%. So that's a nice little change there uh, for sure. I actually quite like that change because that buff was, or that mob's uh, ability was very dangerous made King's Rest feel very unfun, especially on keys where, you know, the healer wasn't up to par. Now, Shrine of the Storm, uh, enemy forces requirements, uh, have, have we talked about this already, so yeah, this is all basically stuff that was already talked about in this video, but the main, another big change here is the Gale Winds damage has been reduced by 28.6%, don't know how that number will come to be, but regardless, this is the first named mob in Shrine of the Storm, one that you often have trouble with bolstering, 
a lot of affixes affect this mob because it's surrounded by stuff that's pretty difficult to deal with. So that's something to keep in mind. Anyway, Temple of Sethralis as well. A knot of snakes damage has been reduced by 50%. So this is something that you could literally just... Uh, pretty easy to deal with anyway but I guess it did a lot of damage I never realized it because you can get out of it so quickly but yeah it is a thing now the mother load uh, this is an interesting change we kind of glossed over this earlier but the energy lash can now be dispelled it's magic I, I guess which is kind of funny because I've always felt like it was dispellable anyway I'm, I'm kind of surprised that it's only now that this is happening because you could AMS it and it acts really weird it's like if it doesn't work until it finally uh, gets the full thing off so that's actually how, yeah, that's how it's going to work now. Not be applied unless the channel is completed, the actual dot, and uh, the debuff itself can be dispelled. So that's going to be nice. We're going to make those masterminds easier to kill. And probably most notably, Echo Blade, which, as we know, uh, pretty a pain in the ass mob. Uh, that mob type, whatever, I can't remember. Weapons Tester. Yep, Weapons Tester says it right there. Echo Blade is going to do a lot of damage, and it's something that I've just been interrupting. I, I, I used to try to interrupt the knockback, because that damage is way worse, but uh, if you get silenced, I can't interrupt the knockback. So I've just been interrupting this instead now when I do uh, Toldegore. Nope, when I do the Mother Load. Toldegore is next, though. Enemy Forces we talked about. But here is a change that you guys might not be aware of. Okay. Uh, heavy Cannons now have a maximum energy bar of 100. Previously, they had no energy. And each cannon blast, which is the ability that you would use to kill the mobs that you kill, uh, costs 20 energy to use. And it does not regenerate, as far as we can tell. So you have five shots. That's it. Once you get those five out, the cannon is done. So this is going to considerably change how people do this dungeon. I mean, literally change everything about the end. And you're going to have to actually kill trash, unless you get really, really good at not killing trash. Like, for example, it might be good to have a blood DK. You might be able to run up. Mount up, get three or four packs together, grip them together, root them, stun them, ring a piece, and those five hits might be enough to kill all the mobs in the area. If not, if you go one pack at a time, easy mode strats like people have been doing in Toldegore, you are going to be fighting a lot of trash. Let's put it that way. So anyway, Waycrest Manor we talked about already, but apparently they also changed Gore's Stained Piglet. Count increased to four points was zero. So these mobs actually used to not bolster, not drop anything kind of useless mobs they're kind of just there to slow you down it felt like uh and uh, that was a bit odd in that hallway especially that hallway was always bad now i don't know maybe they're going to change it so they do bolster now and all this i don't know maybe i'm thinking of a different mob but either way a piglet definitely uh yeah prime prime for the bacon let's put it that way and the probably the most famous one so far is elder lexa's blood bolt damage buff by 25 percent. now a lot of people are like you know, being very, uh, very upset about this. Some people are just saying it's a buff to warriors because obviously warriors can spell reflect this and do a lot of damage, and that is true. But the thing is, they want this ability to be a one shot, and season three, you know, we're going to be a lot better off at not dying. Let's put it that way. So I could understand why they changed this. Uh, it's a 25% buff, which is probably not going to really matter until higher keys anyway. And frankly, we did, what was it, 18? Uh, 18 underrot today on stream and we failed to interrupt constantly we had five interrupts and we constantly let cast go off people were overlapping interrupts constantly interrupting nothing and we wiped i died twice and uh, multiple damage dealers died as well so this is a real fight again uh, it was pretty much not a real fight for a long time ever since they made it so the copies of her come out and they don't uh they don't increase in the volume of their like there's only ever one is what i'm trying to say it's become a lot easier, and uh, those you know, those days are definitely... Uh, I'm, I'm glad that they came, but the fact that it was such an easy fight when it used to be such a hard fight, yeah, I could totally understand that. So anyway, that's uh, kind of an overview there, but there's still a lot more to talk about here. And what we're going to be talking about now is Beguiling's changes. So we've seen a couple talk... Uh, you know, we talked about in this thread, uh, in this Wowhead forum post or whatever, it's about Beguiling's count. Now we're going to talk about... Some changes to Beguiling as well, not just Count, okay? Changes that have been made to Beguiling since the fix first went up in the PTR, which is about the time we would have tested it. So the Teleport ability now has a 5 second cast time, which was actually one of my major complaints with it. It took way too long for this mob to leave, and it kind of stuck you in combat for way too long. So my original, you know, my, my original solution to this was just let, if the mob is the last thing alive, just drop combat immediately. But now that it's a five second cast time, it's kind of like, all right, this is just a lot easier. As soon as you get to zero health, it's gone pretty much. Now the Enchanted Emissary, this is going to only reflect 150% of the damage down from 200%. This is the one that you're meant to knock back. 
Um, and uh, obviously the hard part about this is that you would typically kill yourself if you were attacking something else that was in its ability. So now that's not going to be nearly as bad. Uh, energy now drains at a rate of 5 per second up from 3.3 per second. So apparently it now takes 20 seconds to disappear down from 30 seconds. So this mob is just really easy now. This mob is just probably the easiest one by no small margin. And uh, I guess that's a good thing. One way or the other, this fix has gotten a lot easier. Also because Emissary of Tides, uh, so the health has been reduced on both of these, but this one especially, 60% health reduction. That's a big health reduction. As you see, it now has 655k, considerably less than 1 million. Now if you weren't aware, these mobs used to have about 20% more health than a standard mob in the dungeon. So the, this is, I don't know why they're even putting this down on paper. Now it has a 655k health and a plus 10. It would be better to compare it to mobs around it, but regardless, they didn't do that. So I imagine now 60% reduction, it's going to have less, considerably less health than the trash it's guarding. But a pretty big change here. Crowd control duration now capped at 8 seconds per application, but has no diminishing returns. Really <laughs> some odd stuff going on here with these affixes. But this is interesting because it's going to mean that, you know, it's typically sheep. 30 second cooldown to or the 30 second CD also got a CD on it. I'm sorry, a 30 second duration also have a CD on it. Actually, ironically, on a mage for some ran, random reason, it's a uh, it's got a uh, oh, I guess that there's no oh, yeah, one minute. It's gonna be a lasting for one minute, and there's no CD on, on that. But you know, something like Demon Hunter's ability, it does have a cooldown on it, so you're gonna need multiple CCs for this. It's definitely going to take you longer than 8 seconds to kill the pack. The goal here is still, you might be able to just burn through it now that it's got 655k. But if you're fighting it on some packs, packs with lots of casters, things that are going to be dangerous, you need to stun, etc. No way you're burning it down no matter how little health it has. So it would need to pretty much get one shot. Um, so yeah, you're uh, definitely going to want to CC it. Now, uh, they're talking about it somewhere in this one of these threads. I've already lost it, but I guess they're saying, I don't know where it was. But they're saying like you can literally just uh, root it, spam root it. I guess it's a good option. I didn't even think about that. Um, but yeah, I guess there's some good options here. I don't. I saw that somewhere. I don't know where it went. But uh, oh yeah, here we go. If you have a druid, have them use entangling roots every eight seconds. Uh, chain multiple crowd controls ability to keep the emissary of the group. Hard single target. Burn the emissary before any dangerous cats go off. A combination of both of the above, right? So a, a lot of options now with this one. It's a nice little change here, and I think uh, yeah, it's a good good faith gesture showing that people, you know, it's. The, the goal isn't to make it like this big wall of health that's not going to give any count, right? They've already changed both of those things now, so that's nice. But the Void Touch Emissary has also been nerfed. 35% uh, health reduction, so pretty big, but not huge. Still uh, going to be a pesky mob. But the big, the big change here is that it's uh, going to take 9 seconds for this cast to go off instead of 8. Meaning that, plus the health change, this should die. Yeah, you should probably be able to kill this before it kills you when you're fighting it straight up. But... It's still going to be really hard to fight this mob whenever it's, whenever it's combined with a pack that has, you know, a lot of danger to it anyway. Like we talked about in Siege of Boralus, that pack where it's one of the harder packs in the game, if not in the dungeon for sure. And it's got a Void Touch Emissary with it. So that's, you know, hey, you know, that's going to be a tough pull there for sure. So anyway, they're talking about some of the options here. You can read this yourself if you want. But uh, this doesn't too. I'm going to read this. This doesn't change too much in dealing with the Void Touch Emissary. It's still very difficult in certain circumstances. A very hard single target burn on Void Emissary and it's still quite a lot of health. More than a regular mob in the dungeon. The cast was increased to 9 seconds. That gives you 27 second time limit with no immunity or no line of sight to burn the Emissary down before it becomes a one shot. And doing this forces your healer to heal through 50% health, then 75% health and damage on the entire party. So this is, of course, you know, you're meant to you're meant to line of sight, right? You're not meant to just stand there, but a lot of people are doing that. So uh, th this actually says that you might be asking, why don't you just line of sight it? There's some void emissaries that are positioned in a way that you cannot dip behind a corner, or that you can dip behind a corner to have the decent uptime on the emissary. But there are also some emissaries which Blizzard has placed in the middle of an open field with no line of sight anywhere close to the emissary. The other possible way you can handle the void emissary is pulling the mobs out of range. But then you have to deal with the emissary at the maximum five stacks, granted a bonus 250% damage. I didn't actually know there was a maximum of five stacks, but I guess that makes sense. You never really deal with that anyway. How do you kill it? It won't stop casting until you die and leave combat or its health goes to one. And of course, you can't skip the void emissary because it's true sight. Once it detects you, it auto pulls whatever mobs are nearby. So yeah, here's, a, I guess, a good example. It's actually with the named mob in a Shrine. Never saw this one. Very interesting. This is another one with, uh, you pretty much can um, line of sight it anywhere. So 
Yeah, there's a lot to think about here, man. Uh, a lot to think about. You can continue reading about this if you want, but my opinion, I am actually really excited for uh, Season 3's Affix. Beguiling, I think, is going to change the way people do dungeons. A lot of people have been talking about this, but it's really going to change the way people do dungeons. And then, you know, it's these mob count changes are further going to change the way people do dungeons. It's going to completely, like, it really is. It's going to change everything about how people do dungeons in terms of what they skip, in terms of what they pull, in terms of how they prioritize it. So I'm really hoping that uh, these types of changes will be continued to look at to be looked at over time because, you know, the more uh, the more thought you put into what you pull in the dungeon, I think the better off, and and I think it separates the men from the boys, which you know at times I'm a boy, so I'm happy to see that. Anyway, we also want to talk about this a little bit. Uh, you know, they've already uh, posted about the uh, requirements here, but what they didn't tell you about, what I think is uh, really interesting, you know, what Wowhead didn't tell you about, as I mean to say is these changes right here. Okay, so this is gonna be the last thing we talk about. Artifact power. Several mythic keystone dungeons now award different amounts of artifact power based on their length. See Debralis, Temple, Sethralis, the Motherload, Toldegor, and Waycraft's Manor AP rewards have been increased by 30%. Pretty big deal. But King's Rest, Shrine of the Storm, AP rewards have been increased by 60%. So this is pretty nice, man. I mean, these are the toughest dungeons for sure. So they're not really any longer, I mean, they might technically be slightly longer, but in reality, they're just harder. So it's a very nice gesture that they're going to increase the reward. So I like that. Anyway, completing Mythic Keystone Dungeon at 11, uh, plus 11 difficulty now rewards players with increased AP with 12 and above increasing that amount by an additional 20 per level. So that's nice. So this is going to be really nice. So doing, you know, if we're, we're, we did our first 19 today, right? A first of like real 19. We got, uh, we finished the dungeon Without much problem we had two minutes left on the timer or two minutes over the timer and we've got it would have gotten a lot of ap like a lot more ap a lot more ap because they're already buffed and they're you know going to increase ap as you go up now like substantially so this is going to be really nice so i guess here's examples uh tall desire free old and under rock completed at 11 difficulty or greater now reward 420 ap was 290 so that's really nice See Debralis, Temple, Sethralis, Motherload, Toldegore, Waycrest Manor. Completed at 11 difficulty or higher. Now reward 540. So this is like the baseline. These ones haven't changed. They're considered the shorter dungeons, I guess. But the baseline uh, has also increased because of the you know the other changes. So 420 is kind of hashtag blaze at the baseline now. Then these are a little bit longer dungeons. These are going to give 540 at 11. And again, it's going to continue to go up. And they all used to give the same. This is probably more notable that they all used to give 290. They all give a little bit, not, a little bit more now, obviously, one way or the other. And then this one, the most AP you're going to get is 660 AP. Even though, again, the dungeons really aren't longer. I mean, Shrine of the Storm is kind of long, but King's Rest really not much longer. And uh, it's again only at 11, and it's going to continue to go up. Apparently, 20 per AP level. So if we did, uh, let's see, we did Freehold. Uh, 19 today so if 11 gives 420 let's see 420 plus 20 times 8 7453 AP so that's really good so anyway thanks for watching I love to hear your comments I'd love to hear what you think I am actually extremely excited a lot of crazy changes to be honest I mean you guys should read these patch notes they're absolutely insane oh look at this I kind of stumbled upon this too would bring this up uh, Mythic Keystone Dungeon Weekly Cash now rewards 3,800 AP was 1,900. You are going to get a lot more artifact power. And this, this, these patch notes are insane, by the way. I can make a whole video on this. I don't think I will. But what is this? The power and damage of healing effects on Battle for Azeroth now increases more per item level. I, I mean, I could, this is, I just, I don't want to make this about the patch notes. But there's a lot of crazy stuff going on, man. A lot of big AP changes and uh, obviously a lot of dungeon changes coming in Season 3. So let me know what you think. I'm sure there's still going to be, be people out there who are very skeptical of Season 3. And of course, uh, I stand firm on saying that I think Season 2 was the outlier. It was never uh, way too easy. And people who think it was fun because they can just spam massive AoE on inconsequential mobs. I think those days are over one way or the other. So let me know what you think. But otherwise, thanks for watching. And I look forward to seeing you guys on Tuesday.